It's Platt, and today we head deep in the heart of Texas. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So today, the particular beer we have today is Lone Star Beer. Uh, I recently said I wanted to kind of, every once in a while, throw in some of these old classic brands that either have been forgotten, bought by national companies, kind of pushed down the line, or but just some classic brands that I think people have forgotten that played really important roles in kind of the history of beer in the United States. The, the craft beer thing has kind of left these to the wayside, but I kind of wanted to bring them back. And again, Lone Star is a, a perfect example of that. A little bit on Lone Star's history. Lone Star Brewery was founded in 1884 by Adolphus Bush. Yes, that Adolphus Bush of Anheuser-Busch fame, um, I guess he was contacted by some San Antonio businessmen. At the time, there was no major breweries in Texas. There were smaller breweries, but there was no major breweries. Someone wanted to go big time, so if you're going to go big time, get the big man. That was Adolphus Bush. Um, they opened the brewery in 1884. Now, there's a little prehistory to that. There was an earlier version that was located in San Marcos, Texas, which is a, now a suburb of San Antonio, and it was called Alamo Brewing, and it opened in 1874, but eventually kind of got rolled into the new Adolphus Bush uh, project. Um, they opened the brewery, things started rolling along, and then this little thing called Prohibition. And I, and I told you in previous videos that Prohibition did not hit all at the same time and kind of affected the South sooner and a little harder. So by the time we got through Prohibition in 1933, uh, Adolphus Bush and the Bush, uh, Anheuser Bush was already out of the project. And when the brewery opened, it opened as the Salinas Brewing Company. Now, I believe today there's a, a variation on this, or there's still a, technically a Salinas Brewing Company, but I think they're a distributor now. I don't think they produce any product. Um, but I believe they produce, they, I believe they distribute some of the uh, major brands out of Mexico. Um, like I said, the brewery came back in 1933. By 1940, it ended up ch changing names again and became the became Lone Star Brewing, not Lone Star Brewery, Lone Star Brewing. Um, also, that year was an important year for the beer because uh, brew, uh, brewmaster Peter Creel created the current formulation of the beer. Uh, he was a German brewmaster, and like a lot of those, like Adolphus Busch, were creating the more Pilsner-type lighter lagers or whatever. And again, kind of fit with the American palate. Um, after that, the company started to grow. State of Texas started to grow. And eventually, in 1960, the company went public. And the company continued growing. At one time, you could have owned stock in Lone Star Beer. But when you own a stock, that means it's easier for other people to buy you. And what ended up happening was the company got kind of rolled over several times in different mergers and acquisitions. The first one being, uh, and this is what the part of the story that I really love because it touches a lot of different brands, a lot of brewing history in this. The first brand to take over was Olympia in 1976. Olympia, the uh, great regional uh, beer out of Washington. They held on to the company for only a few years. In 1983, G. Heilman came in and bought it. Now, you might not know the name G. Heilman, but you definitely know some of their beers. Uh, their portfolio is uh, full of these great regional names. Uh, Black Label, Blatz, Bohemia. Again, if you're of a certain age, some, some classic brands there. And that, that was all under the G. Heilman uh, company. G. Heilman ended up holding the company for about 13 years until 1996 when Stroh's, yes, another classic brand, came in and bought the company. If you're of a certain age, you might remember Alex from Stroh's, their spokes dog. Uh, I believe even he was mentioned in a Tone Loke song at one time. Uh, they ended up moving production from San Antonio to a town called Longview, Texas. If you know Texas, kind of a random spot to have a brewery, but what the hell. They only, Stroh's only held on to the company for three years until 1999 Paps came in. Again, another great brand. And they ended up moving brewing back to San Antonio and the old Pearl Brewing. Again, just the, the brands that have been connected throughout the years is just unbelievable. Now, today, Paps still owns this uh brand and Paps actually one of the things they've done is they've again kind of collected a lot of these brands so they're the ones that are producing these brands now oddly enough it's not Paps that's brewing Lone Star uh currently Lone Star is produced by Miller in their Fort Worth Texas brewing so at least it's at least it's still made in Texas uh god bless it um where Lone Star really took off as far as becoming kind of known nationally and again 
the, the brand becoming famous. It uh, was in the 70s. I believe there was a marketing manager at the time for them that had connections with Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson's really starting to take off in the 70s, the outlaw country thing. And then when, before you know it, we have Urban Cowboy, the TV show Dallas. Uh, Texas was hot back then. Also, too, at the time, Lone Star had a great ad campaign. Uh, it was The premise was there was this giant armadillo out attacking Lone Star beer trucks and taking all the beer. Uh, just a little personal note, and again, why this brand kind of means something to me. My father got as a gag gift back then the ceramic armadillo that would lie on its back, and it, it, it was like holding the beer like it was drinking a beer, and I just thought that was the coolest thing. And I remember going off to college and like, Dad, that's going with me. He's like, all right, kid, <laughs> go ahead and take it. So I, I unfortunately lost that armadillo, one of the many moves or whatever, but it's classic. And I'm sure there's a few of those still out there on eBay somewhere or what have you. Um, Lone Star is known as the National Beer of Texas. And one of their more recent campaigns was uh, It's a Texas Thing. And that is that is so true. And if you're from Texas or you know a lot about Texas, Texans are really into being Texans and doing Texas things. So Lone Star is definitely beloved. Well, before I try this Lone Star... Let's check out the stats. All right, so, so today I thought I would talk to you, because uh, again, this brand has a little personal connection to me or whatever. So I thought today I would tell you my five favorite spots to have a Lone Star beer. Number five, it's a little bar called Will Hoyt's. Will Hoyt's is located in Grapevine, Texas. That is just north of the airport, DFW Airport in the Dallas Metroplex area. Uh, a long time ago, Grapevine was just a small little town, but now the, met the metro area is growing all around it. But they still have their old kind of classic Main Street area, uh, you know, some of the old shops or whatever. And Will Hoyt's um, actually started off as a garage, garage and filling stations back, I think, in the mid-30s during the Depression. Eventually got rolled into a restaurant, bar, or whatever. Still open today, still has that classic old look. Um, you could kind of tell in the front that it was, a, the way it's laid out, it looks like a service station. I think they even have like an old pump out there for just nostalgia's sake. Uh, anyway, just a great bar, live music. It just feels Texan, so if you're flying into DFW, go check out Will Hoyt's. Number four is actually not a bar, but it's an area. Uh, it's called Fry Street, and it's across from the University of North Texas. That's where I went to college. Uh, North Texas also gave you Dr. Phil and Stone Cold Steve Austin. So look at that. Uh, maybe someday us three can get together and have a beer. Boys, if you're out there, I'm, I'm buying. How about that? Uh, but Fry Street was just a row of bars. Uh, I killed a lot of her brain cells there. Uh, if you're ever in Denton, Texas, go check out uh, Fry Street. Number three, uh, maybe the area most of you out there may know or have heard of, and that is Sixth Street in Austin. Uh, Austin is the capital of Texas, also one of the great live music cities here in the U.S. Um, not, and it's not just country. The wide range of music, uh, guys like Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jerry Jeff Walker or whatever, made their uh, way through the Austin area throughout the years. And Sixth Street was kind of the strip of bars, uh, especially when I was in college. I think now I've heard it maybe more... 4th Street or but there's still, I was down there a couple years ago, still a jumping scene on 6th Street in Austin. Great place to have a Lone Star beer. Number two is Billy Bob's. Billy Bob's is located uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, but it's in the area they call Cowtown. If you want to go and have a Texas experience, let's say, you know, you've never been to Texas before or you're from out of the, you know, out of the United States or wherever, if you want to have the true Texas experience, go to the Cowtown area of Fort Worth, and inside that Cowtown area is Billy Bob's. Billy Bob's is known as the world's largest honky-tonk. They have their own rodeo arena. That's how big the bar is. It's absolutely massive. And again, it is, if you want to have the Texas experience, it's tough to beat Billy Bob's. And number one is Lukenbach, Texas. Uh, any of you guys out there that are a fan of Willie Nelson or Waylon Jenkins, we, we know the song. Let's go to Lukenbach, Texas, Waylon, Willie, and the boys. It is a real place. Um, I believe at the time when Willie did the song, I think there was only five people living there. Basically, it was a wide spot in the road that had its own post office, but built into the post office was a little general store that had a bar, and that's still there to this day. They've got a campground now, and they kind of built it out because they have now some more music festivals. It's, there's two or three houses. I think the population may be 20 or something like that, but that old post office is there, and that old bar is there, and trust me, that is a great place to have Lone Star beer. Well, all right. Let's have a Lone Star beer. All right. 
Nice golden color, plenty of bubbles. We've got and almost a finger of really light white foam. Uh, smells like an adjunct lager. Let's give her a try. Oh my God. I'm happy. I'm <laughs> happy right now. And it's not, to be honest, it's not the greatest beer in the history of ever. It's just a, a, a solid American adjunct lager. Um, you do pick up the corn and you know that that's the main adjunct in these beers or so they love that corn sweetness You're not gonna pick up any hops, but It's one of those things And again, why I talk about these regional brands a lot of these brands are the first First beers that people kind of drink either in high school or college what have you and just it kind of brings back memories and That's that's the thing I mean kind of brings back memories these are easy drinking beers too because Given even as a college kid, even if I had the money, I wasn't going to chug, you know, Guinnesses or Bosch or uh, you know Sam Adams. That was, that was kind of an expensive beer when I was in college. When it was just kind of coming, out. so you weren't going to drink those and just chug those down. Um, and that's kind of what you do in college, chugging. So again, works absolutely perfect. Uh, light enough body. Um, you you know again. <laughs> You had no problem beer bong in these things or whatever. Just, it's it's amazing how much a taste can, you know, kind of trigger your mind, those memories. And that's, that's, again, what is great about these brands. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or old school beer brands you want me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.